you and the quarterback club to thank you so very much for the opportunity tonight to be a part of the, this kickoff event. Uh, Les, the Bowler, uh, to have, thank you so very much for what you, for what you mean in uh, being able to support this event and, and that sponsorship. Uh, to Coach Andrews, uh, Coach Ladd, thank you for being here tonight. It's great to see you guys. I was uh, fortunate to have Coach Andrews out there on practice field with me the other day, and uh, yeah, we got him back in the back, and he taught me some new words of what I could use for our defense. <laughs> But it, it, is, it is an exciting time, and uh, we are here within two weeks of kickoff. <laughs> Coach Evans, I'm uh, excited for your year that's, that's ahead, and uh, you know it, it's one of these things that, the, that, that that's always talked about in Tallahassee, and it's the importance of what football means to this community, not only at the collegiate level with Florida State and FAMU, but also to all of our all of our high school programs. And it just feels right to get back to playing football, to being able to have fans in the stands, to be able to, to feel the energy and electricity that's ahead of us. And to begin this year, you know, it, it all got brought, brought back to reality and the importance of this game and, and the job that we have and the opportunity that we have with the celebration of the life of Coach Bobby Bowden, you know, here just a week ago. And, you know, to, to be at that, uh, at that day, to be able to, to hear all the wonderful speakers from, from Charlie to, uh, to, to Derek Brooks to Coach Andrews to, to, to so many greats that came to honor, you know, not only the greatest coach to ever coach the game, but to one of the greatest men that have ever walked in the face of this planet. <laughs> and it was a great opportunity to reflect on all of our mission, every individual, and the impact that we are here to make, to help others build up, to help others be a positive influence, to help others achieve in areas that they don't even know that they can, but by serving and loving and directing, then we can make this world a better place. And Coach Bowden was the ultimate example of that. And I'm so honored for the opportunity to, to represent him as a head coach at Florida State. As we go into this season, it is an exciting time to be a Florida State Seminole. Coming out of our first year, you know, it was a challenging first year. It was one of uh, many unexpected experiences. But it was also an opportunity for us to set a foundation for what this program is going to be and where we're going to go. And through many of the challenges, through some ups and through some downs, as a team, we had to come together. We had to be able to show up each and every day with an objective, with a mission, to improve and to be the best version of us. And as I told you last year, as I, as I, I came and visited, it was midway through the season. You know, I do thank God for, for the opportunity to go through that experience with this team. Because it provided, me an, an, a, a, it provided me a chance to show our team, to show this community, to show everyone associated with, associated with the program how you have to respond. Because it's easy to respond when it's 70 degrees and sunny outside. Sometimes it's challenging to respond when you get your butt knocked into the dirt. And things maybe don't go your way. But you got to show up every day with a positive mindset, with a positive attitude, with a, with a heart of service, with a willingness to sacrifice and to do things in a respectful and respectable way. Last year we talked about this Florida State family and what it means. The values that we're instilling to our young men. The challenges that are ahead. And I can tell you, I'm excited about the growth that I've seen. To be able to go through a full winter pro a program. To be able to have 15 spring practices. Because so many people over the last year say, Coach, you know, I, I know it had to be hard not having spring practice. Because you couldn't put in all the offense or the defense. But in reality, that was not where we missed out. When you missed out on the spring practice in the summer program, you missed out on the opportunity to build the most important thing, 
And that's toughness. That's grit. That's a relentless mindset in how you finish everything that you do. Because once again, everybody can say the right thing when they feel good and comfortable. But it's when you're in those challenging moments, when you're out there on that practice field in the heat and humidity, and your body, it doesn't feel good, where do you let this thing go? But we've had a football team that's been able to go through the experience. And anybody that's had a, had a chance to see practice or, or to see pictures of our guys, our football team looks different right now. They look different because of the work that they've invested in the weight room. They look different because of the work they've, they've invested in their nutrition and taking care of their bodies. They look different because of what we did in our tour of duty mat drill and the mindset of what they brought to that. They look different because they've had their butts knocked down. But now they have confidence because they know they can get up and they can continue to push forward. Because any 18 to 22 year old that you talk to and if you ask them if they have confidence, you know what they're all gonna say? Oh yeah. They all say, it, it, confidence is something that sounds good. But true confidence shows up when you've invested, when you've worked, when you've been through the experience, and when you've had to respond when maybe it hasn't been a day of sunshine. And our football team has embraced that challenge. And if we look forward to the season and the opportunities that's ahead, Kick it off here September 5th with a top 10 opponent coming in to Doe Campbell Stadium. And as I talked to our team, I talked about this is our opportunity to showcase the true identity of who we are and what we're all about. And I'm fully aware that there's not many people that are giving us a chance to what we can accomplish. But quite frankly, I don't give a damn. What I care about is seeing a football team that grows in a belief in each other, that has a relationship with each other, that's willing to lift each other up and push each other through everything that we get the opportunity to go through. So we talk a lot about this identity. You know, anybody that's been around the program, that you, you see this word that, that, that's thrown around. It's the word climb. And I can tell you, we, we are on our climb. Well, everybody in this room, you want to get to the top of that mountain. You want to be the best. Right? Just like every program in the country right now is talking about going and winning a championship. Well, there's only one way you can get to the top of the mountain. you got to climb. And for us, and it's a daily opportunity. It's a, da it's a, it's a, it's a daily journey to go out and have an objective to just improve and to be the best version of you. And as we focus on that word, it's an acronym that, is, that truly sets up what I believe is essential to not only have success, but to be able to sustain success. And it's built off, four, or off of five words that are so critical to where we're going. The C is commitment. It's that foundation. It's that family we talked about last year. It's a, family, it's a commitment to the true core values of what Florida, Florida State football is all about. The same values that were established under Coach Bobby Bowen that was built on work and relationships. A program that was built on service, on sacrifice, and respect, and doing things in a respectable fashion and a respectable way. And it's our daily commitment to, for, for us to, to not just be a jersey number or not just to be a position or a coach, but to go out there and make an impact and to be committed to doing it different, to have an all-inclusive approach. And one of the things is, I, I stood in front of you last year, we were coming off the best semester academically that Florida State football had ever had. And since then, we've only done it two more times and got better. We have a team that is making a commitment to be different. We have a commitment, we have a team that's willing to make a commitment to impact this community. You know, last year we had a goal of, of, of wanting to do over 1,500 hours of community service. 
I asked every player and every coach on our team if they were all willing just to give 10 hours within the course of the year. But now we have a chance to do what we say we're all about. And I'll tell you, we went over 2,000 hours as a program in community service. We had an opportunity this summer. I don't know if many of you saw it. it that uh, it was it was a, it was a great it was a great uh, uh, I guess a bet for our for our football team and our staff is that uh, you know through all the things that we had to experience through COVID you know people pointed to college football to, to you know professional football and all the adjustments that had to be made but some of the people that really missed out the most were, were our state's youth you know the youth programs that were canceled. The missed opportunities for kids to be able to go out and play this game that we that we absolutely love. So we made a decision this spring is that we wanted to, to give back. We wanted to serve this state. And so we took our coaching staff and and uh, we had former players throughout the state that came out. And we put on youth clinics in 12 different cities throughout the state of Florida that were free to all second to eighth graders. And it was one of the neatest experiences I've ever been a part of. Because you got to see our state's youth come, put on a Florida State t-shirt, learn the fundamentals, right? get a chance to enjoy an opportunity to grow and get better, an opportunity to learn the Florida State seminal way and how we do things. We also have a chance to put on our summer camps. Right, we had a mega camp that was out here, and, and Coach Simmons and his staff actually came to be a part of this, where we invited colleges from all over the country to come to here to Tallahassee. And we invited, we invited prospects from all through the state to come and, and showcase their skill and talent. And through that, day, through that day and through our camps and our clinics, we had over 7,000 uh, uh, 7, kids from the state of Florida they got directly coached and impacted by our staff, right? They got an opportunity to, to, to receive, right? And an opportunity to showcase who they are and what they're all about. But the people that won the most out of that were our players, getting a chance to see those faces, to be able to give back, to be able to build those relationships. But it was an incredible summer for us as we got to, to do that, living up to that commitment of service, of what this program is going to be built upon. As we talk about that, that next letter, the L, right? That's the little things. Man, if, if you sit there and, and, and you go into a, to any college football program in the country, like I said, they're all talking about winning, a, uh, wanting to win a championship. If you go into our football team, you ask them how many guys want to go to the NFL, every hand goes up. But the challenge is, who's willing to do the little things to set themselves apart? But if I, if I ask everybody in this room who wants to be the best, let me see your let me see your hand. If you want to be the best husband, the best father, the best daughter, the best brother, the best man, every hand should go up. But what's going to separate you? <laughs> what's going to separate you? It's the little things. It's the little things that you're willing to commit to. Little things of being five minutes early to a meeting. The little things of saying hello to somebody when they pass you in the hallway. The little things of giving a little extra effort to finish every play when you step on that field. It's the little things of being willing to go shake somebody's hand or now in COVID day, give a fist bump. It's the little things that make big things happen. So when you come out to our practice, when you see us play, and that's where I want to separate ourselves. Are we willing to do the little things and that others don't think are important? Because when you get to success, which we will be, then you get to stay being successful because of the things that you're willing to do to achieve it. You know, I, I told our team all the time, you know, and many, many of you have seen, you know, probably read, you know, Getting an 18 to 22 year old to sacrifice is a very challenging thing. <laughs> Heck, getting a 39 year old to sacrifice sometimes is pretty hard too. Right? But every day we try to provide our guys with opportunities to sacrifice. And so when we have our guys, when they come into the, uh, to the facility, you know, if they're wearing a hat, 
have to take their hat off when they walk into a building. You know, they have earrings, I have to take their earrings out. They have headphones in, I have to take out their headphones. They have a hoodie, I just have to pull it back. Because every time that they step into our building, I want them to think of what they're willing to give for that amount of time for the team. For the team. Because in today's age, so much is focused on the individual. I can promise you, this thing right here, social media and all the things that are that are that, that go with that, it just focuses on me. For our team to get to where we will, where we need to get to, for where we're going, we gotta be willing to do little things. The willingness to sacrifice, to think of others. And how I got my break in coaching was a little thing. I told our kids this uh, this offseason. It was my sophomore year in college. Maybe some of you have heard the story. My sophomore year in college, I was a, I played at a small school, Central Arkansas. And we were going through spring practice. There was a gentleman that was standing on the sideline. Where I was out there 30 minutes, didn't talk to a soul. And it caught my attention. He was a big guy. I was, you know, kind of intrigued and wasn't speaking to anybody. And we got a water break. And during that water break, I decided I was going to take the opportunity to go shake his hand. When I introduced myself, I said, sir, I just noticed you're over here. This is Mike Morbell. I'm a sophomore wide receiver. Just want to come say hello. Well, Mike, thanks for doing that. My name's Don Shruby. I'm a former player here. All right, I just got a job up at Springdale High School as the offensive line coach. Man, I wish you guys all the best. I said, well, Mr. Shruby, you ever come back? Make sure you say hello. I was a sophomore. Nobody else on the field that day said a word to him. The next spring, we're out of spring practice. Guess who showed up once again? Don Shruby. The next fall, he had a bye week, came to a game. Guess who he came and said hello to? A skinny wide receiver that went and said hello to him a few years back. Little did I know at the time that the head coach at Springdale High School was a guy by the name of Gus Malzahn. <laughs> Five years after that handshake. Gus Malzahn got the offensive coordinator job at the University of Tulsa. And he just happened to call Don Struby to ask if he knew of any young coaches that might be interested in being a GA. Want to guess whose name they gave him? So I tell our football team all the time, you never know where one handshake might take you. Because my sophomore year in college, one handshake changed my life. I stand before you as the head football coach at Florida State University. The greatest job in the country. Because I was willing to do a little thing that nobody else was willing to do. I had no, no, no knowledge that that was going to be a life-changing opportunity. But it leads us never to, never to miss out on saying hello and being nice. It's the little things that make big things happen. I is intensity. And I can tell you, if you're around me for any period of time, you know that I'm going to be intense in everything that I do. But as I talk to our football team, just because you talk loud does not mean that you're intense. Intensity is about a purpose for what you're there to accomplish. Every day when you get out of that bed, do you have a purpose for what you're here to do? Do you have an objective? And then are you willing to give everything that you have to accomplish that? even when you don't feel good. Because sometimes you have to act better than you feel. Because somebody else might be counting on you. They might be needing you. We talked about last year and the experiences that we faced. I've been involved in the game of football for 34 years. I've only been a part of two losing seasons in my entire life. Last year was one of them. You know what? It provided me an opportunity to show a football team what my purpose is. I had to show up every single day along with our coaching staff and to speak victory into these young men, to show them the way, to show them the expectations, to show them how to respond, but to not get caught up in the circumstance, but to focus on the intensity of the purpose of what we're here to accomplish. And that's what we're building now. Every practice, every rep, you take the field and you have a purpose for what we're here to accomplish. And that's to represent this program the way this program deserves to be represented. And that's as the nation's best. 
Because nothing is guaranteed other than the day that we have right here in front of us. So we're going to have an intensity about everything that we do. The M is mental toughness. It's mental toughness. It's one of those critical factors to having success in life. Most people talk about mental toughness and how you respond to adversity. And that is so very important. I also think it's critical to have mental toughness whenever you achieve, achieve it, success. A lot of our players or our, our, our top recruits or guys that have, that, have, uh, that have been patted on the back for, for much of their life for what they could do on the football field. But true mental toughness is when you can stay focused on the little things that allow them to separate themselves to get to this point. The mental toughness is, is the willingness to get up and do things to the best of your ability that you might not even like to do. We have a saying around, the, uh, around our program is that how you do anything is going to be how you do everything. Well, in anything that we do, are we willing to be our best? Especially in the things that we don't necessarily like to do. Because there's going to be days that are going to be dark. There's going to be days that are going to be challenging. Your mental toughness will allow you to carry through in those challenging moments. And then the B is the brotherhood. The brotherhood. And I know there's a lot of young ladies in this, in this audience, and guess what? You're a part of the brotherhood too. <laughs> this Florida State football family. The most remarkable thing that I saw there uh, a couple Saturdays, uh, I guess a couple Saturdays ago, at the celebration of life for Coach Bowden was a brotherhood that was there behind. Players, coaches, fans, friends, supporters, everybody was a part of Coach Bowden's team. Because that's what he did it for. Those players were not just a jersey number. They were sons. They were friends. They were young men that had an incredible future in front of them. And he never missed out on that, on the most important factor. Because at the end of the day, I mean, you can win a lot of trophies, and you can make a lot of money in this world, and you can have all the awards, but if you don't embrace the relationships with who you get to do that with, then what is it for? And as, as we're on our climb to getting this program back to the top of college football, and it takes all of those things, but it's a relationship that is, it is a necessity for your involvement, for your support, to speak victory over our program. Because I understand that, you know what? The last few years have not been what anybody wanted. But going through the process might be exactly what we needed to get back to where we need to, to where we're going. And for our players, it's embracing that. And the thing that I've been so very proud of is to see the investment in the work, the belief in what we're trying to accomplish. Last year, we were the youngest football team in all of college football. Right? We've been able to, to uh, address some of, those, uh, uh, some of that youth by bringing some transfers. We had 13 transfers that bring in over 310 games of college experience. You know what? And that sounds really good. But my favorite thing about it is what they have right here. The desire and the passion help lead others. When I watch them, even though they might only be here for a year period of time, when I see them investing into a freshman, to a newcomer, when I see them, when I see them accepting the coaching to try to push themselves to what they can accomplish. And when I see these young guys that, that really got forced into action last year, and then they're just continued development. And it has been remarkable to see the investment at work for what our football team has done. They're bigger, they're faster, they're stronger, and they're smarter. But they're a team that cares about each other. 
The last two weeks, that I, uh, you know, we track everything. And the workload, the intensity, the speed that we put, that we've been able to put on a practice field, we're building confidence because we're building through work, through true investment. And I'm so excited to see what this football team is going to do when they get their opportunity to showcase their identity on September 5th. It's a great thing to be able to start out on a big stage in a grand, a grand platform. And that identity is going to come from right here. Much like I told you when I first came here to Florida State, our identity is going to be a football team that plays smart. We're going to play smart. And when we play smart, then we have the ability to play fast. Because the one thing that I figured out in my coaching career is that a 4-4 going in the wrong direction is pretty dang slow. <laughs> but we're going to play smart. Then we're going to play fast. And then we're going to play physical, getting after people's tanks. And then we're going to be a football team. We're going to be a football team that finishes. We're going to be a football team that finishes. Because that's what our identity is. No matter what it is on the field, off the field, in the classroom, in the community. We want to be a program of individuals that finish what we start. And we do it to a standard of excellence in everything that we do. And I am so grateful for the support that, I mean, this is incredible seeing you all here tonight. This is an incredible crowd. You know what, this is an incredible place. This is special. And I could not be more grateful for the opportunity to lead this program. We are going to get this program back to the top. And when we get there, we're going to stay there. <laughs> I'm excited about the year ahead. And I appreciate everything that you do. And just the way that you've welcomed me, our coaching staff, our players, into this community and a part of this family. Continue to speak victory. So I can promise you we're do everything in our power to represent you the way you deserve to be rep represented. And that's in a first-class fashion in everything that we do. And God bless you, right? and go Knowles. Yeah.